the last 20 minutes of the sports match zone for today and for the week in fact time for some cricket lovely cricket it's day three of round six in the cwi four-day championship completed not too long ago and we will start our recap in kingston at sabina park where the defending champions guyana harpy eagles continue to drive home their advantage over the jamaica scorpions gerard morisili is live on location yeah thank you so much lance well uh, in a twist of uh, fate here, I guess, for the Guyana Harvey Eagles, they are not too far from victory, but they still have to work for it. They make it still to get if they want to win, as uh, the Scorpions have 296 runs to win after closing the day on 123 for two. Kurt McKenzie not out on a 38, and so too Brandon King, the captain, not out on a 13. So, yeah, it was a really good day. Let me start by telling you how we got to this point. Um, when we started the day, Guyana, uh, Jamaica Scorpions started on 153 for 9, a resumption from their day 2 score. And uh, with the first delivery of the day of day 3, Mel Smith got rid of Marquino Minley for 13. And uh, that ended the innings, giving Guyana a uh, 271-run lead. Well, most people would have thought that they would have put the Scorpions to bat again. But Captain Tevin Imlak, along with the coaching staff, uh, they, they decided against that and decided to bat a second time, I guess, to get some more cushion on their lead and uh, not chance anything, not leave anything out of chance for today and for tomorrow, the final day. Well, Guyana, uh, after Imlat got up to 44, he was dismissed. A really good innings from him. They didn't start as attacking, going to lunch on 64-2, but then they were able to really pick up the scoring after that. It became clear once Kevin Sinclair came to the crease on 36, not how he ended. It became pretty clear that they wanted them to push on the scoring. Tevin himself started to attack the bowling a little bit more. Uh, provided a couple of chances, he was dropped once. Kevin Sinclair also dropped on nine not out. Um, but yeah, it was a, a really good uh, innings from them. And after Tevin got out, he decided that that was enough. And they ended on the 147 for four declared, giving the Scorpions a mammoth 419 to win, which, which also looked like a m big mountain to, to climb, um, but they also uh, had a really good start. Uh, 23 without loss, they went to T. A good watchful start from Carlos Brown and uh, Javon Buchanan, the debutant. Buchanan looked way more comfortable in this second time of batting than he did in the first innings, uh, but eventually he was dismissed. A really good uh, start from him, though. 32 he got, but he not very much disappointed uh, because of the way he batted valiantly. But Kurt McKenzie joining Brandon uh, King at the crease and the two of them really saw the last day, the, 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 the last hour and it was a really good innings from both of them thus far but I'm sure that Versami Perma who did not bowl um, up until the last half hour of the game uh, St. Clair, Kevin St. Clair who only bowled one over yesterday he got the majority of the bowling job to do today alongside the fast bowlers, the, the pacers um, but they did a really good job up until this point. I'm sure Tevin, who I'm going to speak to right now, is not too disappointed with what his team has produced on day three. What do you think, Tevin, about today's play? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we have a lead that we are very comfortable with. Um, it's a case of now just getting the wickets. Uh, the, the bowlers, you know, we did a very good job. Um, fortunately for, for Jamaica, you know, they, they batted well. Uh, credit must go to them, you know, they... They were, they were disciplined, they not for any, any chance that we didn't take. Um, but, you know, looking forward to my uh, game is still in our um, favor. And for a few already, because tomorrow morning, it will be, you know, yeah. it'll be very comfortable. Tell me about the decision then now to uh, put them into bat, well, well, to bat a second time, really. Uh, and most people would have thought that you would have batted, that you would have made them follow on 271 runs, you know, you're not forfeiting your innings, uh, have the chance to bat again, even if they pass the total. Uh, tell me a little bit about that decision. Yeah, it was more around the fact that we, we weren't necessarily want, we didn't want to bat uh, on the last day. Uh, we rather take the better part of the wicket. Obviously, the wicket is deteriorating. So we want to, obviously, we have three spinners 
you know, a team that we're going to use to our advantage in the back end. So um, it was just important that we, we get a lead that we're comfortable with, that we feel like, you know, they can't get to the, um, on the last day. And, you know, we, we, we feel very confident about, you know, what we did and, and the, the space of the game at this moment. We didn't see Gudekish Moti um, up until like the last 20 minutes of the day's play. Uh, what was the reasoning behind that? We saw more Sinclair today. Yeah, I mean, um, Sinclair obviously, you know, have two left arm batters at the crease for most of the day, so it was important that we, we get him in. Um, he, he did create some chances, and unfortunately, it didn't, didn't necessarily go away in terms of the umpires, but, um, you know, he did, he did create some trouble for them. It's just credit must go to Jamaica, they batted well, you know, that pair. Still 296 runs to win. You think you can make it from here? Yeah, definitely. Two early wickets tomorrow and the game. All right, we'll look forward to seeing what happens on day four. That was Tevin Imlak, the captain of the Diana Harper Eagles team. So he had scored so far in this match. Might I, I, I must say though, uh, McKinsey, who before this innings had 220 runs from nine of his innings in the season. So far, he's batting really well. Um, the, 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 the question is, can he push on, get a good score, and then allow this uh, Jamaica Scorpion teams to win uh, this game, to go into the final round of fixtures on a high? That's going to be a question only he can answer. But he did provide an opportunity, a missed stumping chance uh, in the final over of the day's play. Not too much for them to worry about, though, but... Brandon King immediately went down to him after that and told him to settle down and then he sought out the, the end of the day and uh, putting them in this position. So let me remind you of the scores so far. Harpy Eagles, 424 and 147 for four declared. And uh, yeah, Scorpions so far, 153. And uh, currently, batting the second time, 123 for two chasing 419 runs. They still need a further 296 runs to win if they are to of course, capitalize on the points in this sixth round against Guyana Harpy Eagles, the defending champions. It's back to you in the studio. Yeah, thanks, uh, Gerard Marcelli, and uh, good on the Guyanese there. They're um, on uh, course now for their fourth consecutive victory after being winless in their first two matches of the season. They've uh, won three straight and uh, at the moment looking as if they're going to complete their fourth straight victory. They started this sixth round about 14 points off the lead in the fourth spot. And the Leewards aren't doing too well in their game against Barbados Pride, which we'll come to in just a moment. So there is, there is the possibility that the Harpy Eagles are still in striking distance to retain their title uh, with a complete victory here. And then uh, let's see what happens in, in the next round. Uh, let's have a quick look now at the other matches that were played today. Uh, we're going first to Antigua and Barbuda, where the Windward Islands won by 158 runs against the West Indies Academy. The West Indies Academy, their second innings, bowled out for 121. Teddy Bishop, the West Indies under-19 player, top scoring with 47. And Shamar Springer, four for 30. Uh, the Barbadian, who you might remember, was part of the winning West Indies under-19 World Cup team back in 2016. So the West Indies Academy, 158 and 121 in uh, their two innings. So a comprehensive victory for the Windwards Volcanoes who have uh, rebounded here for a victory after consecutive losses to TNT and Guyana. At the Sir Frank Worrell Memorial Ground in Trinidad and Tobago, the combined campuses and colleges require 382 runs now to win at 67 for one. Tall order for them there. The TNT team, remember the Red Force, had scored 591 for seven declared. And uh, then the CCC 238 all out and uh, in their second innings following on, 67 for one. So the Red Force on course for a victory there. And uh, they have been sort of inconsistent throughout the entire season. Queens Park over still in TNT, Leewards Hurricanes, trailing Barbados by 156 runs. Barbados, you remember, 542 for nine declared with the centuries for Craig Brathwaite, Roston Chase, and Zachary McCaskey. The Leewards 288. And uh, then following on, 98 for one, uh, 288 all out. Roston Chase, three for 47, so he's been having a good game. Casey Carty uh, getting 127, so he stood tall for the Leewards Hurricanes, but he was the mainstay of their innings there. And then in their second innings, they're fighting hard here at 98 for one. Following on, Kyron Powell, 52. Kevin Wickham, one for none, but... Uh, Really tough ask here for the Leeward Islands, who still trail by 156 runs following on. 
So good action there in the uh, West Indies four day championship with uh, Leeward's Hurricanes uh, facing trouble here as the leaders and could be surrendering their lead at uh, the end of this round with uh, the teams closest to them, Volcanoes winning already and uh, the uh, Barbados Pride and the Guyana Harpy Eagles looking for victories as well, starting the round in third and fourth spots. We go to break when we come back. The final segment on the show for today and for the week. Back in a moment. <laughs> 